Looking for a new Android phone? Well, maybe we can help you. We have the hot Sony Xperia Z1 and we have the already classic HTC One. Let's take a look how these two compare in this video right now. If hyperglazed plastic is not your thing, how about we compare an aluminum phone this time with a device made of glass? Regardless of where you stand, after comparing the Xperia Z1 to the Samsung Galaxy S4, we are now looking at the Sony flagship side by side with HTC's One. Of course, there's no waterproofing and dustproofing on the One, as you'll find on the Xperia Z1, but it is our belief, shared by many others, that the One is a tough phone to beat, at least in the design materials and in hand feel department. Yes, the HTC One is another phone that needs no introduction. It was, and still is, one of Android's most beautifully designed and executed models, and, as our After the Buzz episode testifies, it is also a phone which has aged pretty well. It is HTC's best phone yet. Period. We'll compare these two today and we'll analyze, as usual, hardware, software and user experience, as well as the camera. Aluminum and glass are common to both of these devices. However, the amount used of each is different. While the Sony Xperia Z1 uses a single-piece aluminum frame construction, sandwiched between two layers of tempered glass, the HTC One only has the glass on the front, the rest being aluminum held together by a polycarbonate frame and its inserts. One of the things we saluted and applauded HTC for was the exceptional feel in the hand as far as the HTC One was concerned. That was mainly because of the slightly curved back, which filled the palm of your hand, coupled with the cold to the touch aluminum. Not many phones can offer such a great sensorial reward. However, the Xperia Z1 manages to match that. Simply put, just like the One, the Xperia Z1 screams premium from the second you lay your eyes and hands on it. It might not have a curved back, and it is definitely taller and wider, but it is a pleasure to hold and very difficult to let go of. Couple that with its IP57 and IP58 ratings, which allow submersion beyond 1.5 meters of fresh water, as well as dust proofing, and you get one hell of an irresistible, sexy phone. The Xperia Z1 manages to achieve that while being 37 grams heavier than the one at 170 grams. It is also 66 millimeters taller than the one at 144 versus 137.4 millimeters. On the inside, these two couldn't be any more different. The Xperia Z1 is powered by 2.2 GHz quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 processor. The HTC One has a 1.7 GHz Snapdragon 600 at its core. RAM is a tie at 2 GB on both devices. Internal storage-wise, the Xperia Z1 only has 16 GB on board, expandable via microSD, while the One has 32 and 64 GB options, both of which are sadly non-expandable. While the resolution is Full HD on both of these, at 1920x1080 resolution, Sony uses a 5-inch panel and HTC opted for a 4.7-inch screen. Technologies are also different. There is a TFT display on the Sony phone with the company's own triluminous technology from TVs, together with X-Reality Engine. There is a Super LCD 3 unit on HTC's flagship, and it also has a higher PPI rating at 468 versus 441. Not that it would matter anywhere else but on paper. While the screen on the Xperia Z1 is an improvement over the screen of the Xperia Z, it does not manage to equal the screen of the HTC One. HTC Super LCD 3 screen manages to have excellent color reproduction, great brightness, good color saturation, and almost Super AMOLED-like blacks. The screen on the Z1 is good, but not that good. It also has a problem, just like with previous Sony phones. Viewing angles. If you look at the screen, dead on, dead center, you will see a clear, crisp image with colors which are vibrant enough so that you can be satisfied. Tilt it to the sides and you will start losing sharpness, tilt it even more and you will start seeing only whites with washed off colors. Sadly, the screen on the Z1 is still not that good. It is good, but not as good as the one on the HTC One. Also on paper, the 20.7 megapixel stabilized camera on the Z1 destroys the 4 megapixel ultra pixel camera on the One, if you look at sheer numbers. We'll see how they actually compare later on in this video. Sony needed to fit a larger battery on the Z1 to power everything. We're looking at 3000 mAh on the Xperia Z1 versus 2300 mAh on the One. Sadly, Neither of the two are user removable or accessible. And then there are the HTC One Pros. It has an infrared port on top, which you can use as a remote control, if you want, which is not present on the Xperia Z1. We also need to mention Boom Sound, HTC's front firing dual speakers, for which the Z1's bottom mounted unit is really no match. Android 4.2.2 Jellybean operates on both of these devices, 
and both platforms have custom user interfaces on top of them. We'd say the playground is level, but still, there are many differences, especially when it comes to Sense 5 on the HTC One, which we've really grown to like. It is a minimalistic skin on top of Android, which doesn't bug it down and sure looks good. Blinkfeed is there to make this a polarizing topic on whether people like it or not, but those who do have easy access to most of their social media and news feeds. Sense 5 on the One retains nothing from the stock Android experience, or very little, which is negligible. However, it does so in an elegant way. Sony's own UI is more conservative and we have to tell you we like the app tray on the Z1 more than on the One, mainly because of its horizontal scrolling and lack of clock and weather at the top. Needless to say, they both deliver a great Android experience. However, the One wins when it comes to the notification shade, you can swipe it down with one or two fingers depending on what you want, which is more intuitive than what you'll find on the Z1 which you can only swipe down in a single way with a single finger. The HTC One has been known for its snappiness. It is still super snappy, as we told you, it is aging well, but for those among you for whom milliseconds matter, we'll tell you that the Z1 is even snappier. The Snapdragon 800 makes a difference, even if not a huge one, in day-to-day -day tasks. Launching applications is most of the times faster on the Z1. Not by a lot, but enough so that your Facebook feed is displayed less than a second faster than it would on the One. If you're a person that cares about such things, the Z1 is the winner here. In terms of features, we are on a more level playground than we were with the occasion of our Z1 vs S4 comparison. Software-wise, the Z1 features small app capabilities, which are windowed apps running and floating on top of everything else. Whether you'll use this or not is up to you, but it's there on the Z1, and that's another point for the Sony device browser, calculator, calendar, notes, recorder, and a few others. For an in-depth look at HTC One's features, make sure to check out our full dedicated tour of everything present on this device. As far as the Z1 is concerned, you can choose a theme among the existing eight, which will not only change your wallpapers, but it will also affect the overall accent of the phone. If your household has several other Sony products, it will be very easy for you to mirror content from the Xperia Z1. The keyboard is also something you can customize to your own liking, including the layout, as well as the theme. The album application has Picasa, Flickr, Facebook and Sony Play Memories integration, while the Walkman application will handle all your streaming and local music playback needs. If you want to tweak your photos, there's an Autodesk application pre-installed called Pixelar Express. There are also Sony's own apps to identify music and videos, but sadly, the video bit, alongside other applications, are not available in our region. Talking about stills, let's take a look at the camera performance. We'll play the samples for you while we tell you that choosing between the two is not so tricky this time. They both have their strong and weak points though. If this comparison would only refer to specs alone, the Z1 and its 20.7 megapixel camera would be the clear winner against the 4 megapixel camera on the One. However, there's more to the story. In bright, sunny outdoors, which we consider perfect lighting, the One exhibits more noise than the Z1 which makes the Z1 the winner in this category, despite the fact that itself produces noisy images. Bring them indoors and kill the light, and HTC's ultra-pixel camera has a hard time coping with the lack of illumination. The Z1 snaps a picture without a problem, even if the details are something you can't forget about, and when the flash is turned on, it also produces clearer images with more detail. In terms of video, the Z1 is focusing, as well as metering, much faster than the One. It also adapts faster. As you will see in the upcoming samples, the Z1 clearly offers a better video recording output than the One, but that's our opinion. Look and judge for yourselves. Hey everyone, this is Tony from Pocket Now, and this time it's the Sony Xperia Z1 or Z1 compared to the HTC One. Two ones here, and we'll see whether the 20.7 megapixel shooter on the Xperia Z1 is any good compared to the 4 megapixel ultra pixel camera on the HTC One. The scene is the same, conditions are the same as in with the case of our Z1 versus Galaxy S4 comparison. And we're gonna try to do things in that exact same order, come against the sun, and then uh, go in here for a uh, close up on these leaves. Stay for a couple of seconds just for autofocus to do its thing. On the screen of the Z1, it looks like the Z1 is struggling a bit. And then let's move in for another focus here. A close up on this flower and we'll stay there for focus as well as exposure and then circle back to uh, where we started from the church thank you very much for watching this was Anthem from pocket now
Hey everyone, this is Tony from Pocket Now, and this time it's the Sony Xperia Z1 or Z1 compared to the HTC One. Two ones here, and we'll see whether the 20.7 megapixel shooter on the Xperia Z1 is any good compared to the 4 megapixel ultra pixel camera on the HTC One. The scene is the same, conditions are the same as in with the case of our Z1 versus Galaxy S4 comparison, and we're gonna try to do things in that exact same order, come against the sun and then uh, go in here for a uh, close-up on these leaves stay for a couple of seconds just for autofocus to do its thing on the screen of the Z1 it looks like the Z1 is struggling a bit and then let's move in for another focus here a close-up on this flower and we'll stay there for focus as well as exposure and then circle back to uh, where we started from the church thank you very much for watching this was Anthem from Pocket Now to wrap everything up we're looking at a fresh phone versus a six month old device even if a flagship there is a slight difference between the two in terms of performance but when it comes to the camera the Z1 is better when it comes to the overall experience we who like sense tend to give it to HTC, but your tastes can vary. In terms of build quality, materials and in-hand feel, the Z1 is as close as it can ever get to HTC's one, by now, famous execution. Factoring all of the aforementioned in, we hope we've made it easier for you to pick your phone. And if you also need it to be water and dustproof, it's really no comparison. Folks, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. This was the Sony Xperia Z1 versus HTC One comparison video. If you like this, please give us a thumbs up. And don't forget, you can follow and you should pocket now on all the usual social media channels down below. And I'm Anton Dina. You can, of course, follow me on Facebook as well as on Twitter. Everybody, till next time, stay safe. Thank you very much for watching.